Okay, so now the way to solve quadratic equations is by completing the square. Now, I hope you remember how to complete the square because I'm not going to explain all of it here, but I'm going to show you just how to use it to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, but what's the idea? Well, you recall that when we have had x squared equal to 16, we knew that the answer was 4. But one of the reasons, or one of the answers is 4, one of the reasons why we know that is because we know that if we take the square root of 16, we get 4. So to get x on its own when we have x squared on its own, okay, we can take a square root. So if I take the square root of x squared, is equal to the square root of 16. But you notice that, remember we had two answers here. We had the one answer was x is equal to 4. The other answer was that x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so when I do this, I must remember that I can have two answers. So in front of my square root on the constant side, I must put a plus minus. And then I see, okay, well the square root of a square number just cancels out. So this becomes x is equal to plus 4 or x is equal to negative 4. Now the other example that we had was when we had an x squared equal to negative 1. And we can do the same here. Here we take the square root of x and the square root of negative 1 and we put a plus minus in front. Now here you can check this in your calculator. It will give you a big E, an error. Okay, because there is no real number for the square root of negative 1. Okay, so this has again no real solutions. Okay, keep that in mind. But with that in mind, let's go and look at a possible solution. Okay, let's say uh, one that might have a solution. Let's say I had something like x minus 2 squared is equal to 9. Okay. Here we see that on the left hand side we have a bracket that is squared and on the right hand side a constant number. Now there's no problem in taking a square root here. I can take a square root on both sides as long as I remember to put a plus minus. Now the square root and the square can cancel each other so that I have x minus 2 is equal to plus 3 or x minus 2 is equal to negative 3 because the square root of 9 is 3 okay but the bracket could have been a plus 3 or a negative 3 so that when I square it I get 9 okay now what I can do is simply solve so I can say x is equal to okay what minus 2 will give me 3 well 5 minus 2 is 3 and this one what minus 2 will give me negative 3? Well, negative 1 minus 2 will give me negative 3. Or I could have just um, added a 2 on both sides. Okay. And that would have also given me these answers. But here I go. There I have the answer to this equation. Again, two answers because my x essentially has a square. Okay. But what if I had something like this? If I had something like 2x is equal to 3 minus 2x squared, okay? And I want to have the format where I have a bracket, the x minus or plus something squared, equal to a constant number, okay? That's what I would like to have. If I have that, I just take a square root on both sides. Now to get into this format, we are going to use solving quadratic equations. Uh, sorry, we are going to use completing the square. But before we can complete the square, we must first write it in the format ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's see, how do I do that? Add, subtract a 3 and add a 2x squared on both sides. Okay, so what do we get? We get 2x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And from here we're going to complete the square. 
Okay, well, how are we going to do it? Well, in an expression, we used to group the first two terms. Here we're not going to group these terms, but simply keep them on one side while getting the constant to the other side. So to get rid of that 3, I'm going to add a 3 on both sides. So you can kind of, from the beginning, just leave all the constant numbers on the one side and take everything with an x to the other side. So now what do we have? We have 2x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. The next thing I want is I don't want a, a coefficient other than 1 in front of my x squared. Now what's nice, what we used to do is take it out as a common factor. What's nice about equations is I can just divide away everything because as long as I divide it on both sides. So I'm just going to divide everything with a 2. Everything is going to be divided with a 2 and that takes me to my next step where I have x squared plus x is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, now the next step is exactly the same. I have to take the middle term, in this case uh, whatever is in front of the x, halve it and square it. So that's what I'm going to add. We used to say it's b over 2 squared. b is what's in front of the x here. So there's a 1 in front. Divide that by 2. So I'm going to have um, 1x and add to this 1 over 2 but squaring it. And again in an equation it's very nice. I don't have to subtract it as well. All I need to do is do the same on the other side. So on the other side I've got 3 over 2 and what did I add? I added a half times a half which is a quarter. So I have to add a quarter on this side as well. Now this thing we're going to two very nice brackets. Okay. What can I multiply with itself to get a half squared? Well, this is a half times a half. And when I add it, I get 1. A half plus a half is 1. So you'll see this will always be the number inside that bracket would be the number that I'm my constant number inside my bracket here. Yeah. Okay, and on this side what do I get? I get 3 over 4 is the same as 6 over, sorry, 3 over 2 is the same as 6 over 4. So I have 6 over 4 plus 1 over 4, that's 7 over 4. And on the right hand side, or the left hand side rather, I have x plus a half squared is equal to 7 over 4. And this is the point where I can take my square root on both sides. So let's do that, taking a square root on the left hand side and the right hand side. Just remember your plus minus. So now I have x plus a half because the square and the square root uh, nullify each other is equal to and the square root of 7 we don't know so let's keep it plus minus the square root of 7 but the square root of 4 is simply 2 and I already have my plus minus in the top so I don't need it in the bottom and all I need to do now is subtract a half on both sides subtract a half on both sides so that now I have x is either equal to plus square root of 7 over 2 minus a half or x is equal to minus square root of 7 over 2 minus a half. And when I do this using my calculator, because I don't know what the square root of 7 is, my answer is more or less, okay, if I round it to three decimal places, 0, 0.823, or in this case, it is negative 1,823. And here you can see it would have been impossible to get two brackets in your mind, because the two brackets had to have been x minus 0, 0,823 and x plus 1,823 and I don't know but I can't do that in my head finding those two brackets. Okay, but that's as far as I want to go with you and um, this is how we do it if we use um, completing the square and it's especially handy when we can't get two brackets. Good luck trying this on your own.